Hello everyone, Rich Nance here with your Defensive Tactics Technique of the Week. Today we're going to talk about not remaining still when you're facing a threat. Frank, we all know that a, a moving target is harder to hit, so if we're in a gunfight or, or in a fight period, if we're moving, we're going to be harder for the bad guy to hit. You know, when you're talking about shooting, it's also harder for us to hit what we're aiming at if we're moving. That's why we have to train it. But it's twice as hard if the target's moving while we're moving. Which is realistic. And, and I love it when we see trainers who teach static positions to shoot from for maximum stability. And it's great if you have that option and wonderful cover and no exposure. But the reality is when they're shooting at you, you're moving. Unless you've got that phenomenal cover that you're behind. And while you're moving, you're trying to shoot at them. And unless they're complete morons, and a lot of criminals are, but unless they're complete morons, they're moving too. Two moving targets shooting at each other. It's no wonder we have that 20% hit rate in actual shootings. But it's important that we don't just stand still, whether it's bullets coming at us, or a fist, or a foot, or a baton, or a knife, or anything else. We've got to move. Jaeger, James Jaeger, uh, we both know him, has uh, this get off the X statement that he uses, that X being the target. Got to credit him for it. It's an excellent, simple concept. Get off the X. The X is where the threat's coming. Get off of it. Yeah, you got to kind of do something to derail the train. I mean, if you just stand still and let this guy plow through you, it, it's easy to predict that things aren't going to go well for you. Right. You know, from, a, from an unarmed standpoint, I mean, something as simple as as the attack is coming in, taking a slight sidestep right. you know, at a 45 degree angle, the angles are very important. Sometimes we tend to practice movement drills, moving like forward and back, set of left and tracks. right. Yeah, exactly. So just that slight step may help you. Uh, if I stand still, I may get hit with your punch, but a slight step, also move my head a little bit and parry, right. that may be all that's needed to avoid it. And it doesn't matter whether we block it, duck it, get out of the way of it, whether it's a punch, a kick, or a bullet. The miss is all we're after. Exactly. And it won't occur. We can't count on luck to make it happen. If we move, we increase the chances of the miss. And I put this, you know, we've got Jaeger's quote up here. And I, I've got the word move up here, which is actually an acronym I learned from a gentleman named Tom Peroni. And I don't know if it's his own quote or if I'm crediting it incorrectly, but he says that this move stands for motionless, is the M, operators. ventilate, which means they get holes put in them, if I can spell it right, easily. Just right in cursive. Just right in cursive. Motionless operators ventilate easily. You stand still, you get bullet holes in you easier. Now that applies obviously to the kicks and the punches and the cuts and everything else. You stand still, you take the impacts. It's a bad thing. So you move. And I know you're big into Boyd Cycle, the OODA loop and everything. I mean, talk about how this relates directly to that. Well your opponent is going through his decision-making cycle. He's observing you and orienting himself to you. So if I'm the bad guy and I orient myself to your position, I decide I'm going to attack you. I'm deciding I'm attacking you where I've observed you. Then I act on that. If you move even just a foot in a direction, I've got to reorient. That's a new observation. I've got to reorient. I've got to change my decision. I, I might change my attack. I might decide not to attack. Whatever it is, you just with that change of circumstance, you've reset my decision-making cycle, which slows me down in the fight. Another way to slow someone down is through lateral movement, where instead of someone being able to run straight towards you, you're making them now have to essentially do some type of an L, right? Correct. I mean, that, that's actually increasing the distance that they have to travel to reach you. So, I mean, that's definitely a good option if someone's charging you with, say, a contact distance weapon, like a club or a wrench or a screwdriver, whatever it is. Right. And, and one consideration, a lot of people think the answer to that is, two lateral steps, or you know, that's what we kind of practice on the range when we got a bunch of people and our space is we limited. We do, but we're restricted by the space. Yeah. We need to keep our minds expanded and remember that when we're out on the street, that we don't have that confined space. Our best two lateral steps might be behind the cruiser, put the cruiser between us and a bad guy. And I mean, we've all seen this as a kid. You see the kid and the dog dancing around the coffee table or the two kids dancing around. The... Some of us have been unlucky enough to have parents with toddlers that we dance around the coffee table trying. When the bad guy is on the other side of the cruiser with a contact distance weapon, there's a limit to how much of a threat that person is. None of us like to think of ourselves as having to run from a threat around a cruiser, but I don't know that we're all, if we're honest ourselves, eager to have to shoot that threat either. You're uh, exactly right. You know, I, I think that sometimes 
we need to keep our ego in check and, and do what's a little bit better. You know, another option rather than taking those two lateral steps like this and maintaining a good stance and everything is to kind of bug out. I mean, to just say, hey, I know my patrol car's 10 feet that way. If I get to that, I can now have that as a barrier between me and the bad guy with the contact distance weapon. So maybe you turn, actually turn and punch sprint out, to your car. and as you're running to your car, you deliver rounds. Now, is it harder to deliver accurate fire one-handed when you're running away? Yes. Should you practice that on the range so you know what you're capable of? Yes, but that's certainly a valid option. But if you're bad, unless your bad guy is on some kind of reality altering drug, having rounds come his way, whether they're hitting him or not, is gonna slow him down. Nobody who's rational likes to run at bullets coming their way. I'm not sure we're all rational because all too often we do that. But you gotta move. As Jaeger said, you got to get off that X. It's just no matter what type of fight you're in, movement is, I, I think I've heard this before too from some prominent instructor whose name I don't recall, movement is your salvation. I mean, when Certainly you're moving- the beginning of it. There you go. So don't stand still, make sure you're using movement to your advantage.